creating some space here for Capcorny. Whack on him. Oh, and what a goal! Oh, Picorni, we are not worthy! It's a windy Saturday afternoon at Darien High School today as the 2-2 two two Darien Blue Wave hosts the 3-0 Staples Wreckers. Hello everyone, I'm Owen Heffron, joined alongside Jack Book, a former lacrosse stud for the Blue Wave. And in store today, folks, a battle between two of the best teams in the FCAC and honestly even the nation. Jack, tell us about these two teams and what each side should seek to do today to be successful in this game. Well, this one should definitely be a fun contest. We got two of the best in the state. Uh, had some awesome back and forth last season, so it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. Keys to the game today are obviously going to be face-offs, controlling possession, um, time of possession, then I would say shot selection, making sure you're getting the right opportunity when you do have the ball. Uh, obviously weather not ideal today, but there's always a chance that that can sort of enhance the, the experience for the players. So inclement weather, I, I did a broadcast a long time ago with, with, uh, with Damien and, and it was one of the windiest games I've ever seen so hopefully it doesn't get like that today um, but yeah I'm excited for this one so thank you for having me yeah of course I mean Darian looking for revenge the records were the squad to take them out of the state championship last year and route to their own victory and this should like you said Jack be a thrilling contest and it it's coming right up on the DAF media network
Face off getting ready here, the Darien High School Stadium field. And rain's already starting to play a factor here, so we had some sideways rain coming down during the national anthem. And That's we talked about it. Scrum for the ball here. Yeah, in the intro, that's Mariska versus, I believe it was Cisco Salato. Good ground ball there by Bonner. He's been having a great season, really fun to watch. Bonner going to Tufts next fall for lacrosse. Long pull defenseman. Tom has it now at about the 40. Solid clear there from Darian. Just getting the ball to that far side to a long pull, having that midi stay back. And we'll get our first look at a Darian possession. It's over to the captain McGuckin now. And one thing I've noticed about this Darian team on the offensive side of the ball is they have a lot of speed. So as the flag comes down there, getting up a little bit too high, illegal hands to the face or cross check to the head. Yeah, but Corny dancing with it now. Let's see if they can get an opportunity here with the flag down. Up the top to Bilodeau, the sophomore. Fighting to get top side. Got a little high on them again there. Overall, Staples seem to be settling in nicely on the defensive side. As Corny open look, he flings one, goes wide. And I think overall that's a good take. You like that matchup. I mean, a bit of a far shot, but as we've seen from Brady Bacorny, he's the type of guy who can make those electric plays. Um, so, yeah, everyone's just feeling each other out right now. A key for the players on the field right now, especially the guys on the sideline, is just try to stay warm, keep your feet warm. You know, get a little bounce in your step so that when you're running on that field, you don't have a whole bunch of lactic acid built up, um, especially in the first quarter here. Once you once you get that sweat going, you'll you'll be uh, you'll be good to go. But definitely important to stay warm for the first few minutes of this one. Bonner carrying it up to the top of the restraining box here. Swings it to Rubenstein. Yep. Ball moving from Darian here. It's Barnett right there to Picorni. On the lefty, I believe it's West Gallon right there. Staples playing. Pretty solid man down defense here. They're not getting out on the hands as much as I would expect with some of these good shooters on Darien. Oh, the top. Thought about it for a second. Yeah, Barnett looked for it. Back to Bilodo. Open shot, but Corny saved. What a stop. Just low to high, trying to change the plane, but Great Staples job. goaltender read that one all the way. Good job from Josh Marcus. Critical turnover there, though. Can't do that, especially on a man down situation. I mean, obviously, it's tough the ride. You got an extra man, but. Uh, you know, definitely would love to get that ball cleared so you can kill a little bit more clock. Corny has it. Near side at the 30. Scallon to Bilodeau. Barnett flings one, Rupenstein saved again by Marcus. And I'll tell you, Marcus, two great saves off the start of the game here. Um, he's headed off to play at North Carolina next year, and it shows he's reading the ball well. He's, he's seeing the ball well as the penalty expires here now. Um, but a good opportunity for Darian. I think that skip pass there, you know, obviously if that skip passes, you know, headers right to a shot and you can get a shot off, that would be ideal. But Staples did a good job recovering, so the ball had to move one more. But then you had a great step down opportunity. So these shots will start to fall. It's just uh, right now we're, we're still figuring each other out. Scallon. We're going to Staples defender. That's number 17, Jake McGeehan. There's now a shot and scores. And that's just a nice three-quarter release there by Rupenstein. Beats him up high. Uh, we've seen two awesome low. We saw high to low, or sorry, low to high, and then now uh, that's just a great release there. So you see that dropping that three-quarter release it makes it harder for the goalie to read whether the ball is going to be going to the low corner or to the top corner. It has enough snap on that shot to just beat Marcus to uh, the crossbar there. Got to stick to that low angle like you were talking about, Jack. Got it right under the pole of... Max Murillo for the Wreckers. And the Face captain delivers. Going to be important here as, what's the call? It looks like a push against Darianne. Loose ball push, but Staples look at their shot now. Excellent wing play so far from both squads. It's been uh, keeping that ball on the carpet. It got made its way all the way down to the restraining box on the first faceoff. So as as I mentioned in the in the pregame, you know, this is that's a point of emphasis for both squ squads this, uh, this game here. As we get our first real look at Staples' offense, I tell you it's a fun group to watch. Well coached, Coach Kishansky's done a wonderful job with these guys and building this program. Darian doing a good job not letting anybody get topside there. Yeah, it's Halky with it. Gets it back over to number five, Ionone. 
everyone, they seem to just be scanning, you know, taking the air out of the ball a little bit. Against a team like Darian, where you got a lot of athletes, and as I said, you know, fast athletes, you're going to want to make sure that your time of possession is worth it, and you're going to get the right shot. Ball come around here. Yeah, it was a shot by Udell. Off target. Might have been able to take a couple more steps curling in towards the net there. Hagen kind of had a good look at it. Um, and as you're getting, as you're fading away from the net, if you're trying to shoot across your body, it's a lot harder to put that shot on net. So, not seeing as much ball movement here from Staples. I think everyone's figuring out their one-on-one -on -one matchups, trying to keep the ball. You know, like I said, not not throwing any risky passes. Oh, McNamara jars the ball loose from Udell. Udell, the Michigan commit, and the junior is also a basketball and soccer player for the Wreckers. Saw him on the DAF Media basketball stream against Darianne. This past year. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch today because I had the pleasure of coaching McNamara. He's got so much length. You know, he's a very tall kid, but he moves well. He's good with his stick. So to allow him to play inside a bit more as you see him, you know, cheating in there. There's Burmeister. Burmeister trying to find a way inside. Looks to fling it back out to Ionon. Halky. Through X here. Rain's starting to come down, so sticks are going to start bagging out a bit. Ball's going to start throwing down up for everybody. Interesting, though. They got McNamara hung up here, so he's here. That right in front of the, the crease, saved by Hagen. Great stop right in front there. Saw it coming, but interestingly, I'm seeing the uh, play calls are coming in from the sideline there. They had McNamara hung up uh, with the guy at X, you know, scanning the field. And at the last second, right before he threw that pass, he heard a shift in the play call from the uh, echoed from the sideline. So Coach Kashansky calling out the play, the sideline reciprocating or, or you know repeating the play. So that'll be interesting to watch. That's a very you know interesting and actually very good tactic. So he's a great coach. Hagen denied Halky of a goal there. Corny here. Corny spinning. Good move to get inside. Got to keep it hot there, but you know what? Keeps the possession alive. He had a guy underneath his arm there. So, yeah, probably the wise call to just pull out and reassess. Got a 1v1 matchup against a short stick here, though. So, oh, and this is always super uh, important to pay attention to, right? When you get an attackman, the caliber of Brady Picorni with a short stick on him, they're going to try to switch. The defense will often try to switch a pull back onto him, but that's an opportunity you're going to want to exploit. And Tristan Schaefer looked like he won that battle as Picorni did get to uh, some open space, to be fair, but shot that one wide. There's Caesar, it's Caesar inside. inside. Caesar gets hit hard by a bunch of wreckers. Ball is free and scooped up. One thing to note that I'm noticing about this Darian offense, and it could be, you know, because it, you know, bodies are cold. You know, guys aren't necessarily. I mean, with the attack unit, you're standing around after that long defensive possession, but not a whole lot of movement with your feet off ball there. So uh, guys are having to try to bring it inside to the middle of the field. You'd much rather try to get topside. And if that guy does decide to come underneath, you need people to move out of the way. Looks like we got that first midfield unit back out for Darianne here. Yeah, the starter is going to be a crucial part of this blue wave offense is now it's really coming down. Darianne high, Porter Barnett behind the goal. Barnett finds some Barnett space. Barnett flings it across to but Corny oh. tried it behind the back. Wow, and that's an, that's, that's an around the world there. So not only is it behind the back, but it's on his opposite shoulder. So think of going all the way around his body. That's crafty, uh, crafty idea there. Um, good idea from Barnett. You know, trying to, he's cr trying to create offense. You know, want to be careful not to force the ball in certain situations. You know, as I mentioned before, time of possession and quality shots are going to be important. So I think uh, collectively both teams here need to just stay warm like I said, and, and get through to the second quarter here because once that second quarter hits, everyone's blood will be pumping. It's Halky with it now. As we see Bonner switching on to what looks like Burmeister there. Yep, Burmeister burying that pole on the crease, Here's leaving uh, their short sticks up top. But we're going to have an ISO here from Ianone on McNamara. Yeah, it's Udell on McNamara. Tries to set the Dale pick. to the outside, flings it across, Burmeister. And that's eaten up pretty well by the Darian defense. Good job by Bonner there on the recovery. Also great job on that pick there, getting through, communicating, and then McNamara taking that, you know, what's the shortest distance between two points? It's a straight line, right? So he found a point to cut off. Uh, I think it was Ian Owen who was a a attempting to dodge across the top there. 
Now a bounce shot, Avery Mueller, super fast. Once again, another look on the replay. He was able to sneak around. That was number 55, Elliot Lancaster. And that's, you know, great. I like the take, but that's a tough angle shot. Uh, especially if your release point's coming from super high up like that, your elbows are kind of down low. You almost want to snap that three quarters and bury it to the near side pipe on the low, you know, near side low corner. Another one from Halky that didn't find the back of the net. And interesting, I'm seeing a lot of bounce shots coming from the Staples side here. I don't know if that's coach saying, hey, the turf's going to be soaking wet, the ball's not going to bounce the same, or if that's just the, the tendency for a lot of these guys, but... I'm curious, you know, Hagen seems to be seeing the ball pretty well right now. It's hard to pick it up in the rain, but Hagen's doing a great job going to Loyola for a reason next fall. Burmeister. See the stick starting to bag out there. That's a pass was a little bit low, so everyone's going to have to adjust. If you're on the sideline right now, you're, you're taking that into consideration. Udell. McNamara's there. Burmeister, spin move. See here, there's just about, just under three minutes left in this first quarter, and as I was saying earlier, time of possession, you know, these had, we've had two or three really long Staples possessions. So limiting that transition offense from Darian, something that Darian's been priding itself on for a number of years now. Um, obviously, Staples has a very complete team as well. That's an interesting uh, man ball call there from yeah. five. Might have gotten away with a little bit of an interference there. Plus, I would have probably just gotten the ball myself if I'm on the, if I'm in that position. I believe Charlie Clark was trying to find his teammate inside right in front of the net. Just care of, of a player. So now it's number 91, Tristan Schaefer. Like Takes it up. With these long, long possessions, you're seeing Staples getting a chance to substitute their guys through the midline. So they're in no rush. Trying to expose the weaknesses of this Darian defense, which... There aren't many. Oh, there's a little extracurricular going on here. Tempers flaring. We got a marker down. Good initial check. I don't know if he saw the ball was already on the carpet there, but uh, yeah, that one extra check to the back is, oh, maybe it might have been the cross check to the head. That's hard to say. And it was 55 and 55 Lancaster on Charlie Clark. So we're going to get a chance to see Staples man up here. Good opportunity here for the Wreckers. Tell you what, a little cold, but this is lacrosse weather. Starting to see the guys, you know, get a little bit more animated. Now a shot scores. Staples takes the opportunity immediately. Tristan Schaefer, the Colgate College commit. And that's a fantastic, fantastic decision there. If you're going to give him that much time and space, you know, uh, any defense... You want to see shots from outside, but you got to keep in mind, Darren's man down here. So if you're letting him go from that far, he's, you know, absolutely has the green light to, to rip one there. Great placement. Tough for Hagen to, you know, get down to that low pipe. Job well done. Game's tied up. One apiece. 143 left in the first. There's a clean faceoff victory there. There's another shot, but Hagen comes up strong. Interesting sequence there. So almost a great trail check by Darian, the Darian face-off guy there. Uh, and then a little bit of a high pass over to the wing. Um, handled it great, but, you know, at that point, Hagen is already set and is already in good position to make a stop on the ball. Darian McGuckin pushing transition yeah, here. open space, now gets to Bilodeau. Bilodeau up to Bilodeau. up the top, trying to get past the man who scored the goal. Oh, excuse me, that's not Tristan Schaefer, that's Max Marilla. Darren's going to slow that down there. Getting a little antsy. I know guys want to contribute and get, you know, put points on the board, but probably the best decision there to just pull back and uh, see if they can get a, a tally here before the quarter ends, going into quarter two, up one goal. McGuckin yeah. passes back to Rubenstein. Rubenstein, goal for the wave in this one. Bacorny is shot. He can't find the net. I'll tell you, something that I like about Bacorny's shooting technique is he hides that stick behind his body really well. It's really hard to tell where he's going to release that ball. So obviously Marcus, very he's proven already in the first few minutes here to be a very proven goalie himself. But interesting call here. Picorni tried to set a pick at X, and it looked like the Good Staples call. defenseman might have gotten up high on him. So they're going to call a penalty here. We're going to get a chance to see a Darian man up. Yeah, that was 
Number 16, Max Hill, freshman. Ran right through Picorni. As now after Staples scores, being a man up, Darian gets their own opportunity. I don't believe that's a locked in penalty. I, I didn't see him, you know, motion that it's gonna be locked in at all. But yeah, anytime you're setting a pick, obviously it's the offense's responsibility to keep their feet still and not what's called a moving pick, not mm -hmm. move out of the way at the last second. But if you're a defenseman, you are allowed to run through that check so long as you're not getting high up in the, you know, high chest, low, like up in the head area. So uh, Darren's gonna get another opportunity here with 25 seconds to go. Clock's running, they're gonna hold this one out, see if they can just get the last shot of the quarter. Time is winding. Staples clapping it up here. And Darian seven. Looks like they have no intent of doing anything. So this is just so that they can maintain possession in the second quarter. Um, I would thought maybe we would see something there. It's just tough timing, but yeah, second quarter, Darian will be having possession of the ball on the other end of the field. Uh, so good call there by Coach Jeff Braymeyer. All right, that's the end of the first. Got a 1-1 one, one lacrosse game here. Darien High School Stadium Field. We'll take a break and be right back. Second quarter on the DAF Media Network. Are you enjoying this broadcast? If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network, please help support us with a donation. DAF Media is committed to education and broadcast excellence. Your support allows us to keep bringing you high-quality community programming while giving our student volunteer broadcasters hands-on STEM experiential learning of all parts of computer networking and video production. Your donations help pay for equipment, insurance, transportation, and our award-winning advisor and make these broadcasts possible. To donate, you can scan the Venmo QR code shown here or visit our website at dafmedia.org backslash donate. The link to donate is also in the description of this YouTube video. For those of you who prefer a more traditional approach, checks can be made payable to DAF Media and mailed to the address shown here. Any donation of $1,000 or more will be recognized as sponsors of our broadcasts for one year. Feel free to pause the broadcast to write this down. Thanks for watching and supporting DAF Media. Second quarter beginning now. And as I said before, Darian will maintain possession here since they held the ball with the man advantage as the quarter ended. Doesn't apply to halftime. I think it only applies to the first and second, oh, sorry, first and four, uh, third quarters. Because we're going to get a chance to see that Darian man up. A lot of anticipation here after waiting, I think it was about almost 20 seconds to end that first quarter. Step down from Corny at the top, McGuckin scores. Wow, and what a well-timed, you know what, McGuckin there does a really nice job arcing into the pass, so he's able to get a lot of velocity on this and release it very quickly. I'm surprised Staples seemed really packed in. I see one, two, three, four, five Staples players, and that, yep, that slide there from the stringer is just a little bit late, that short stick stringer that's in the middle of the defense there. Great job by McGuckin recognizing that that's a scoring opportunity. Um, as a midfielder, that's that's... You dream of having opportunities like that. So Darian able to capitalize early here in the second quarter. Yeah, got it past Marcus. And the Bowdoin commit. The football captain puts Darian up one. And interesting, they opted to go with the pole on the faceoff there. So you see they're trying to limit the, uh, the amount of clean faceoffs won by this Staples squad. So already changing it up. Faceoffs. Obviously, have become an integral part of the game, whether it's high school, college, the professional ranks. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not the face-off rules are going to change. But uh, it's interesting to see Darian throwing a couple different things out there as we see McNamara getting ISO'd really far up top mm -hmm. here. Climbing the ladder is and it's Udell. Udell. Yeah, trying to work on the Penn State commit. Udell all the way, goes down. Hagen drops the pole. You know, that's Great overall stop. a good take. I, I think shot placement. Maybe you want to get that a little bit more. It's either the near side or far side pipe. It was kind of shot right at Hagen's feet there. As here's an opportunity. Darian on a run. McBride at his feet. Couldn't grab at the sophomore there. And they're going to say it was tipped. I didn't, I didn't see it. I was kind of looking the other myself. direction. 
but that's going to maintain, that's going to re remain Darian Ball here. Uh, great present, you know, opportunity in transition, but like I said, with these these uh, these long possessions by Staples, it's going to be super crucial for Darian to maintain possession when they have these opportunities. You can't just, you know, throw the ball away. I did think that was a decent look. Uh, you know, looks like uh, looks like he was pretty wide open on the far side there. Got getting out of Bacorny. Bacorny hasn't found Pater yet. Trying to get that top side as he's going to ISO now. He has that short stick. So I'm wondering, Staples might honestly be leaving the short stick on Bacorny to try to make him take shots from way outside there. And you see 42 then sliding early. It gives, the it gives Staples the opportunity to limit the amount of skip passes that Bacorny can throw to either backside or right on the doorstep. So good call by uh, Coach K. If that is. Now and McGuckin scores yet again, back-to-back -back goals. Briggs McGuckin. And that's how you stick it right there, I'll tell you. Starting to see both sides here. Both sides are starting to come alive. Obviously, it's been a while since we've seen a longer Staples possession, but Darian able to capitalize early here in the second quarter. Sort of reading the back of the head here. You can see McGuckin sees his defenseman's heads turned and makes that move, cuts towards, I believe it was Picorni who threw the, uh, who had the assist there. But then, you know, one hand, you know, one foot sort of jump shot, sticks it to the top corner. It's tough for the goalie to read because you don't know if he's coming high to high or if he's going to drop that down low. Either way, that's when you change the plane of your shot like that, it's a very hard shot to save, especially that close. Yeah, it went top shelf on him. And Mariska went early on the faceoff. So it's Staples possession. Burmeister. And I got to give a shout out to Ricky Schulman on the Darien sideline, getting hyped up there. Had the pleasure of coaching with Ricky. Uh, he's got an awesome, awesome relationship with everybody that he's coached. Uh, the kids all love him. So definitely saw Darien sideline getting fired up on that last, uh, that last goal from McGuckin. Darien not ranked on the. National lacrosse rankings for week five as Hawkey bounces one. Udell picks it up. Get a whistle. Saw the helmet come off there. So it's twice now. So you're seeing these guys, once they're shooting, Darian's staying on their hip and continuing to drive, which you got to be careful. It's, it's, I wouldn't say they're necessarily, it's, you know, a violation push from behind, anything like that. They're just, you know, maintaining contact, but. We've seen two Staples kids hit the t uh, hit the turf here in the last two possessions. So Darian playing pretty physical. Obviously, Staples a very physical team as well. It's 21 here at the top. Wolf Lemming as Rupenstein picks trying him up, trying to work on him there. Nice to see some two-way midfielders here from the from the Blue Wave guys being able to play both sides of the ball. Udell tries to get around the long stick of McNamara. Now a shot down low. That one goes in. Great low to low finish there. Just absolutely buries it. Ben Burmeister. Staples guys doing the uh, <laughs> the Barbarian celebration there. I love to see that. Uh, but yeah, that's just good vision from Udell. Every time he's come around that crease there, I'm seeing even if he has a step, he's got his head up. So if you're a young attackman watching this game right now, one thing to pay attention to, your ex-attackman who's sort of your quarterback of your offense, Watch how Udell maintains keeping his head up and scanning the field. He's able to find that backside look uh, and, and sort of dictate, you know, quarterback the offense from that X position. So great job by both Udell and Burmeister on that awesome low to low finish. Timeout called here by Staples. So Coach K is gonna want to draw something up here as we got about eight minutes and 39 seconds left in this second quarter. Yeah, Staples looking to keep their undefeated record alive. And Darian, like we mentioned, trying to get back at Staples for kicking them out of the state championship last year. Last time Darian beat Staples was in 2022 when they won 15-10, and Darian went on to win the FC Act that year. It was almost like they couldn't really be stopped by anyone. Yeah, Staples, I, like I said earlier, Coach Kashansky have a ton of respect for what he's been able to build with this Staples program. Um, I have a bunch of good friends from back when I played, you know, Mike Rialli, Ross Goldberg, Josh Willis. That Staples program, they've always been right on the doorstep, and it's it's cool to see them getting the their turn at, you know, being the, the number one team in the state. Darianne, obviously, 
storied program. They have a ton of awesome state championship moments, FCAC championship moments, and uh, I know that they've definitely circled this game on their calendar given the results from last year. So I've been looking forward to this game for a while. It's definitely turning out to be the sort of slugfest that I was hoping it would. The yeah, soundtrack's been awesome today, <laughs> by the way. We had some run DMC before. Keeping the juice up. I'd love to see both sidelines here, you know, trying to stay a little warm, though. I see a couple guys stretching, but believe me, if you're standing there stagnant and then you're called on to go, you know, help your team, you're going to want to be warm. It's hard to keep warm up here when we're under a tent. We're in, not wearing shorts and short sleeves, so. That, that could be it, too. I could, uh, that, that could be it. I'm trying to keep a little pep in my step. Burmeister over to Clark. Short stick, uh, so we call this an invert set here. They got the short stick from behind. A couple of nice checks there from uh, That's Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah, That's Lancaster going at Clark. Good athlete. Back and down. Staples, yep. And the one thing I'm noticing with Staples, they're being very patient. They're not taking the shot unless it's something they Here's wow. Udell, Udell. Good attempt. Looks like he hit the side of the net. Hagen saw, I, I think Hagen might have seen him leaving his feet there and opted to match stick, meaning he took the head of his stick and just stuck it right to the head of, I believe that was Udell. Lancaster all the way, hits off Marcus. Good take from Lancaster there. Obviously they're, we want to see that transition. It's interesting, Lancaster's gotten it. That, that's, that's a bit of a force there. So that's two possessions now where we've seen Darian turn the ball over without getting a decent look on the offensive end. Scallon was looking for it. Now flings it across. Lancaster just... Darian's going to get that timeout call. What a call by Jeff Braymeyer. Wow. Nice job securing possession there and then flinging the ball up in the air. I mean, it, you know, acrobatic plays like that are, are definitely things that can extend possessions. Uh, you know, so that was, that was pretty interesting to see there. Good job from Darian retaining possession. But one thing I do want to touch back on is that previous fast break situation there. It almost seemed like Staples was letting Darian come in close. And I did like the shot there on that last possession. I thought, you know, if you have the chance, take it. Nice high overhand release. Um, but I think now after a couple of those where they haven't quite panned out, I think the best thing to do would be to allow your offense to get settled in. You don't want this to be something where you're tiring out your defense because you're turning the ball over on the offensive side. So uh, overall, though, I, I like to, you know I like seeing guys taking shots. You got to shoot to get hot and shoot to stay hot. So sort of a, a fine line you got to walk there. But this has been a fun one so far. 100%. Both teams break their own respective huddles. Another great song. You guys are crushing it today. It's a great one. I don't know who's on the music duty, but been very 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 good no get a new ball line. here it looks like the officials are swapping out the ball that they had might have been a little some turf pellets on it or something like that as we see Rupenstein getting a touch Rupenstein McGuckin already has two and interesting you're seeing with the the sticks being wet, the right sticks are going to bag out. You're seeing the guys run to each other and make a shorter pass rather than throwing the long pass. Staples has shown that they're willing to get sticks up in the passing lane. So Barnett out in front, Rupenstein. Good defense looking there. Looking for another. Staples recognizing that cut by Rupenstein. Scaling to Barnett. Barnett directs him. Got to keep your feet moving on offense here. So you don't want to stand in one place for too long. There's Barnett. Barnett finds McGuckin. McGuckin looks like he's going to get a crack at this matchup here. McGuckin trying to get past 42. That's Sam Petrosino. And we're seeing Brady utilized again up from this, this sort of ISO set up top here. Um, he's got tremendous vision. You know, obviously we've seen his score, uh, goal scoring ability. But it seems like Darian really trusts how he sees the field. It's a good strip. Yeah, strip taken there away from now. Dar uh, from Staples. My rather. goodness, Staples on the run now. Now a shot right in front of Hagen. Good eat from Hagen. But here, Darian's going to get the ball right back here on a fast break. Let's see. Let's try to guarantee ourselves another possession. That's an uncharacteristic uh, quick turnover there from Staples. Obviously, they were in transition, so you're, they're going to want to you know, put, put the ball on net if they have the numbers. As the flag's down now, it looks like Staples is off sides. No, nope, I'm doing the head count here. doesn't look like they're... 
It's definitely for something. And Darian Bench was getting hyped up. They'd be doubling the ball if it's an, oh, nope. Yep, there's a guy in the middle of the field there, number 11, who's not covering anybody. I'm, I'm curious. He should be, yep, Max he should go now and double the ball. I'm not sure why he's staying packed in. Darian might get an opportunity if, if 11 doesn't find someone to cover here. Rupenstein. Almost like they're playing his zone, but maybe it's, you know. Yeah, you're right. Max Murillo is just standing kind of right in front of Marcus. Morgan Rupenstein now. Darren needs to be careful with the ball here. Schaefer. You have a great opportunity potentially as the rain's really starting to come down. So good to see these Darian offensive, whether they're attackmen or midfielders. Everyone's recognizing that the rain is playing a factor. They're shortening up these passes and they're looking to get better shot opportunities. So Corny dodging down to his strong left hand here. Corny out in front to Barnett. Barnett, oh, low and over the net. Good take and some serious contact there. Physical defense from Staples. A lot of contact. Wreckers Barnett's wrecking able to, on that one. Barnett's able to get right back up. Surrounded by Navy Blue jerseys. I thought that was a good look from Picorni to the doorstep uh, there from Barnett, but an excellent handle by number four. Um, and then obviously just unable to make that finish, but had the right idea. Well, you would in, Ideally, you would love to see that sort of as a quick catch and finish in front but that set him up really beautifully to sort of walk around the front of the crease there. Anytime you're dodging from X or you're working around the crease, you always want to say finish through, right? So finish in front of the crease, in front of the net. And that would have been an op awesome opportunity as we get a look here at Darian's man up. Yeah. Scallon back to Bilodeau, two sophomores. And Darian's really packing this Staples defense in. They're playing a lot tighter than they were in the first quarter. So I'm not sure if that's just... Bilodeau shot. Yeah, Ooh, that one's off the mark. That's from 10 yards. So Staples needs to recognize these shots are coming, and, and you got a bunch of good shooters on the Darien offense here. So oh, that looks like it was a pass off the back of the net. Yeah, so they're going to yeah. say turnover on Darien. Yeah, we'll give Staples possession. I think it hit the back of the net. I'm not sure if he tried to maybe bounce it off the back of the goalie. I would, I would doubt that it. That would have been... An unreal goal of that. It's hard to do that when you're in. from, you know, from legitimate. Oh, Aaron pass there from Marcus. And now a bad turnover. Offsides called that time on Staples again. So that's back to back offsides penalties for Staples. Just not how you're going to make the most out of a, 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 a contest like this. You got to make sure you're tightening up that box. Yeah, co head coach Will, Will Kashansky for the Staples kind of pleading his case. And I know Coach K at half is probably going to have. Oh, and another turnover from Darien. So that, look, you'll see that was a long pass across the side of the field. Staples in a good ride there, so not giving Darien many opportunities. But the rain definitely playing a factor. We've got to see guys tune this up on both sides here. Couldn't get a stick on it. Now there's Clark. There's McGuck in there. Clark does, did a nice job there using his height to his advantage, getting nice and low. McGuck almost overran him, but he recovers pretty quickly there. Good physical defense from these two-way uh, two midfielders I'm seeing from Darianne. So we're going to get a – I have a feeling we're going to see another situation where the ball is going to come up from X here, and we're going to get a nice step-down opportunity from this Staples offense, perhaps on the backside. Clark at the top, it's I known. You know, and work, going to work here there's, against. There's Hendrickson. Hendrickson shoving him iron on shoots. And I could not tell if Hagen got a piece of that, but if he did, he's having a great start to this game as Darian's going to clear it ahead. That's Bremer. Actually, the number wore off. Hold on. Sorry, that's. Liam Donald, no, nope, no, nope. excuse me, looking at the wrong roster. Olvaney, that was Olvaney there. Yeah, that's Olvaney, the yeah. Excuse me, I, uh. <laughs> well, good Lancaster, a shot, snatched up, but a marker down. These rosters, we, we had rosters in front of us, but the rain has washed all the ink <laughs> away, so we can no longer see who's who. Uh, but I had the privilege of coaching uh, Will Bremer, and I'm pretty sure he wore 28 that year, so my apologies to Olvaney. We're going to grab new rosters in about 2 minutes, 45 seconds when halftime <laughs> hits, so won't, hopefully won't be many more mistakes. I 
And so it seems like this is the perfect opportunity, whether it's Darian or Staples, and Darian having the uh, having the ball here. We'll see if they take this as an opportunity to slow things down, get the sticks tightened up. Because that rain is definitely, you're seeing a lot more balls hit the carpet now than you mm -hmm. were in the first quarter. As a good look inside. But Corny finds McGuckin. Good finish, just couldn't Oof. get a handle of it. A lot of people discredit Corny's passing ability because they know how dangerous what a scorer he is. Outlet pass there from number 77 on Staples. That fadeaway Murillo there with that fadeaway pass to a streaking midfielder running up the yeah. sideline there. He found his older brother, Max. Let's see, one, two, three. Staples is matched up. Darian matched up, so. Trying to run a little, you know, misdirection here. It looks like Staples is trying to create opportunities off the fast break with different substitution tactics. So they're subbing not only by bringing a guy across the field in the midfield line, but also through the box. So I'm going to try to keep an eye on that and work out exactly what may have gone on or what may have gone wrong, rather, with those previous two offside calls. Behind the net, it's 55, Charlie Clark. Rupenstein, relentless pressure. Now it's back up to the top, Burmeister. Under a minute 30 left to play. Staples down one. And it looks like Darian's opting to cover Clark with a short stick. I thought perhaps they were getting, uh, you know, they were running an invert set, but, you know, Clark being an attack, and it looks like Darian's trying to keep their extra, uh, they want a little extra muscle up on the top end, of the, sorry, the, the, uh, the high end of the restraining box there, so that midfield unit. Looks like Staples tries to initiate a lot of offense from the top of the box, so. Five I own. Over Clark, over now you now Udell has it. And you'll see Udell does a nice job. He's keeping his head up, goes, try, goes around the goal. Look, he's done a lot this game. That one, uh, Hagen maybe have gotten an elbow on it. 46, 46, sec replay. 46 seconds left. They're looking to get, you know, obviously they want to tie this thing up before the half. Kind of a tough angle shot there, though. You have a lot of contact, right? You got defense that looked like Charlie Tom was all over his hands there and then drops his hands, tries to shoot that low to high. If I'm an attackman there, I'm actually trying to shoot that overhand into the hip of Charlie Tom and burying it low using Tom as a screen. That would be very hard for Carter Hagen to see. So overall, if you're a young attackman watching, that's just uh, good a good take, but probably better to shoot more of an overhand release there as we see a nice three-quarter release. Yeah, Burmeister deflected off to the side by Darian. Timeout called now, 13.4 to go. Stables will take their time. And Coach K will discuss things with his squad. Low scoring affair so far. It's definitely going to be different from teams that Darian has faced the last two games on April 7th against Manhasset. 20 to four, Darian won, and then two days later against Fairfield Ludlow, Darian won 18 to four. Definitely not finding as much net as they did in those two games. It's definitely gonna be a harder contest like the ones they faced in the first two games of the year when they dropped 0-2 against Fairfield Prep and then Brunswick. But Darian, being 2-2, has outscored their opponents 51 to 28. And yeah, starting the season off 0-2, uh, obviously it's it's not ideal. It's not where Darian would like to be. But if you're a team looking to make a run into the postseason, you'd almost rather the adversity hit you early on in the in the season. Uh, they had a nice comeback, or sorry, a nice a nice win against Manhasset there. So to get a nice win against a a uh, powerhouse opponent like Manhasset, you know whether it's you know down year or not, you know it, it's to beat a team that badly and a team with that much tradition. I mean that's got to make you feel good if you're one of these Darian guys. 10 seconds left now. Here go the Wreckers. Shot. Wide off the mark. And they're going to get 4.8 4 seconds here. So there's, they're going to try to crash the crease here. Let's see if Udell either tries to dodge this. Here's Udell. He's going in. Udell goes inside, loses the possession of the ball. Yeah, that's whistle blown. Trying to dodge underneath there. Charlie Tom gave him a ton of space. So I don't blame Udell for trying to get, you know, to dodge and get a nicer, uh, higher percentage shot from closer into the net. But I would have almost thought that Udell would want to hang out back and then all these players up here, you see all these Staples players, they have one, two, three, four, five guys that could have just crashed the net there. But yeah, Udell deciding to go underneath of McNamara. McNamara yeah. 
And that'll be halftime. 3-2 your score. McGuckin, leading goal scorer, two goals. And there we have it. We'll be back. The second half of play is teams will jog off the field. And it will stay on, actually, but second half. Coming right up on the DAF Media Network after this short break. The Darien Foundation was founded in 1998 by Richard and Maureen Chilton, and the thesis behind that founding was to bring technology to the Darien public school systems. And that launched us, and that got us going, and through technology and capital project initiatives, we've now funded over five and a half million over the last 24 years to build a better Darien. Our board really likes to get involved and assist the partners that we collaborate with, whether it's a grant for a youth project or a grant from a community service, schools, the police, often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm, but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police, drop the gun! Faro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings, we can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that technology. At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year for a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared, to be well-trained and well-staffed, to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien schools, which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program, which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots, compete against other leagues, and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. Regular classes, students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darien Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project, and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. 
And I look forward to you continuing to work closely with the Darien Foundation, both on this project and other projects down the line. We welcome ideas for possible grants. We'd like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners, or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation. Are you enjoying this broadcast? If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network, please help support us with a donation. DAF Media is committed to education and broadcast excellence. Your support allows us to keep bringing you high-quality community programming while giving our student volunteer broadcasters hands-on STEM experiential learning of all parts of computer networking and video production. Your donations help pay for equipment, insurance, transportation, and our award-winning advisor and make these broadcasts possible. To donate, you can scan the Venmo QR code shown here or visit our website at dafmedia.org backslash donate. The link to donate is also in the description of this YouTube video. For those of you who prefer a more traditional approach, checks can be made payable to DAF Media and mailed to the address shown here. Any donation of $1,000 or more will be recognized as sponsors of our broadcasts for one year. Feel free to pause the broadcast to write this down. Thanks for watching and supporting DAF Media. Second half about a start. You're seeing both sidelines here. A little bit of bounce going on. Guys trying to stay warm. 
I love seeing the uh, the knuckleheads, the uh, the young youth lacrosse kids here standing in the pouring rain, cheering on the wave. Cisco Salado beats out Mariska for that. Look yeah. at the first possession in the second half. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a ward there. And they're sort of jawing at each other now. Slow to a Fogo, but so they're keeping him on. They're gonna try yeah. to set a pick here with the with the Fogo. Oh nope, he's just gonna try to beeline it for the midfield line. Let's see if he turns around. Yep. So Staples gets an opportunity here. Oh, Mariska slips. So two things they were trying to set up there. They were trying to get the. Let's see. Yeah, they're trying to get the Fogo there to set a pick, so that would trap the short stick or sorry, the Darianne faceoff uh, specialist on the defensive side of the ball. And then in the race to the midline, you saw that Staples Fogo sprinting back towards the net, trying to get a look off the uh, opportunity there. Is now a shot. That was from Charlie Iannone. And nearly through the uprights as well. That had some uh, heat on it for sure. Couldn't tell if Hagen got a piece of it, but that's that offside. Sort of an awkward position for a goalie when you're shooting. I wouldn't say that that was necessarily to the upper 90, like the top corner, but Offside uh, offside shots are always tough to stop. It's Udell working inside Udell, yeah, here. yeah, tries to go in. Able to get it. They're going to call McNamara for a flag here. I didn't see him on his back, but he definitely made contact with the crease there. So he's definitely in the crease. I didn't see a whole lot of contact here. Let's see. He's in front. Is the ball in? He rolls back. And a little bit of contact, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah, that, that could go either way. So we'll see if they decide to wave this off. Doesn't look like they are. So we're going to get a Staples man up opportunity. Good job by Udell there, getting McNamara on his back. So making that roll and then keeping his stick upright and tight to his body so that in order for McNamara to get any leverage, he has to put his uh, bottom hand over uh, Udell's hip there. So that's what caused the push, or drew the push penalty, rather. Good job, Udell, selling that. They're going to wave off the goal, though, it looks like. So no goal. Yeah, no goal. The ball was in the back of the net. It got behind Hagen. This is only Udell at the top now. 30-second penalty. So we, we have, uh, looks like Lancaster's up at the midfield line here. And Darian Lull losing one of their best defenders, McNamara. Penn State commit. Brother Connor's also on the team as a shot scores. And Number Hagen, 91, Tristan Schaefer, second of the game. Hagen got a piece of that, but that's just from in tight like that. That's you got to think from a goalie's perspective. That's only a 10-yard shot, maybe more, maybe maybe 13 yards. So Darian playing a little packed in there. You got to make sure you're getting that on their heads. As I see the Staples sideline getting pumped up here. Even a very dove at Tristan Schaefer the last second tripped him up, and that'll get any sideline going too, right? So any contact games. You know, maybe not so chippy or anything like that. Like it's not like guys are, you know, throwing some shoulders, but to be denied that goal and then given the man up opportunity to capitalize on it will juice up any sideline. Salato. No, that wasn't Salato, excuse me. That number sixty six, Jay Anastasi. Fogo wins that one. Against Mariska. Substitution here. McGuckin checks in. It's another two-way midfielder for Darianne. Feeling the temperature drop a little bit. Maybe the wind is just picking up, but not still raining pretty consistently. I wouldn't call it a I wouldn't say it's freezing cold out, but it's the combination of the wind, the rain. Gotta make sure you're staying warm. It looks like both sidelines have some energy, so that's a good good sign. As we see Bonner picks up. Yeah, Burmeister here. Bonner getting his stick out in front. Gets it over to Schaefer, the man who just scored. I love the way Bonner plays, I got to say. Chuck Tom jars check. the stick loose. Got lucky not to get called with a procedure there. The ball stayed in the stick in midair, so that, that could have been called as an illegal procedure on Staples, but what a great detwig there from uh, by Darianne as they pull up to push transition. Here's Lancaster. They're going to keep yeah, running. Lancaster now. They're going to let him in. Look, again, this is the third time now. They're just going to let Lancaster get in tight. Here he goes out in front. Barnett kind of hung up and drops the ball. So that's now the third time we've seen Lancaster as he's trying to ride the ball back here. Got to be careful not to get, you know, don't want to be throwing too many of those checks on the on the hip there. I know he's going for the bottom hand. But that's the third time now we've seen Lancaster turn the ball over in transition. So, you know, 
trust your personnel. Obviously, if you have you know an attackman, I believe it was Burnett on the crease, who you know can handle inside. Like, sure, that that could be a great opportunity. But at this point in the game, with it being a three-three game in the third quarter here, you need to value possession. Udell a shot high. Good take. A nice high to high release. That thing had some mustard on it for sure. Fireball right at Hagen. Inbound here from X. Highness Clark. Hagen's now over to Burmeister. Burmeister, Notre Dame commit. Carter Hagen's having an impressive game right now. It, I've, I, I, I've been very impressed with him over his entire career for sure. But in this game, he's definitely, you know, fending off a bunch of these outside shots for Darian. They want him seeing those shots. He's seeing them well. The wind really picking yeah. up here. Wind is blowing hard. Udell. Comes around the goal out in front, slings one, and a little bit of not on target. A little bit lenient there with the free hand. Uh, you know, McNamara, great position defenseman. Obviously, as tall as he is and as fast as he is, he stayed on the hands. But Udell able to find a way to get a shot off there and a decent quality shot at that. Just wasn't able to put it on target. Darren defense playing a little bit more aggressively outside here now. You see the uh, you see the sticks up in the pass lane there. Let's see. Not so much up in the passing lane. Ball's over to Udell here. Udell Got a big short McNamara. opportunity. So you see the pick was thrown there. And it looks like number six might have been in the crease there. Good Burn job trying to set up that big short opportunity. Big short meaning you have a short stick and a long pull uh, covering two attack minute X. You want to basically set a pick with the short stick. It's another great play by Charlie Tom. Forces a turnover. Now slings it across wide. McNamara with the pull on it. Now McGuckin. Here Good. he goes, Finds McGuckin. Space. Finds the open field. And let's see. We open field, and here he goes. Try to slow this ball down. Good, and see we're going to get a Darien in possession here. Behind McCorney. McCorney hasn't had the ball in a while. Definitely a little bit of chippiness going on. You see six sort of drawing with McGuckin there. But he gets caught sleeping, right? So now Darien, they're not going to push on it too hard here, but that that could have been an opportunity for Darianne to get a quick op, uh, quick look off the midline substitution there as Bacorny's driving hard. Then Bilodeau comes on now. There's a bat pass wide and Wreckers get it back. And you know, Darian gives Bacorny a ton of, uh, of freedom to do what he does best. And you know, he's, he's, as I said earlier in the game, he is more than capable of making those types of backside looks. I think the rain plays a factor today, so that stick not throwing exactly as he would expect it to, so that getting away from him just a little bit. I'm gonna see Staples here, there. That's Schaefer over to number 21, Will Fleming. These long possessions from Staples are gonna be crucial down the line as you see a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of back and forth you're seeing on every single midfield substitution, they're trying to get Darian's personnel hung up, meaning offensive personnel stuck on the defensive side of the ball. Here's Fleming, Fleming shot. That one high. Goes over to their side and good hustle there by, that's Rupenstein down there, just making sure he's the first one to that ball. And on that previous take from Staples, I mean, it's pretty much a, I mean, that's a low angle opportunity. I liked the release point, that overhand release. Uh, I would have just put it low, but again, I, I just, I, I keep going back to it, but I think the weather is playing a role. Sticks are bagging out. He pulled that one a little bit, so. Better to be safe and shoot that thing low if you have the chance. Here's McGuckin now. McGuckin gets hit. Good job getting Morello. away from that there. Nice double team though by Staples, just knowing that that was an opportunity to collapse on the ball. McGuckin manages to get away from it. Rubenstein jogging now. Good chance anytime you can sandwich a player in between a short stick and a pole. Um, Rubenstein comes Rubenstein across the middle. over to Bilodeau. Gets the middle, and now Bilodeau is gonna have his chance getting Bilodeau. across the top. Here he goes, shoots. That's a just good missed. release. Just missed. Tried to set the feet and put a little bit of extra, you know, power on that little extra leverage. I think maybe you had the guy beat, so maybe keep your feet moving and try to get that thing onto the far side pipe. So not a bad take. Oh, down high. low! What a shot! Pacorny was that McGuckin again? My goodness! A hat trick for Briggs McGuckin. 
Briggs Take another look. Briggs is putting on a clinic today. He's, he's scored every goal that he's had has been from a different point of the field and a different different finesse, right? So different skill set. He's, he's showing his sort of well-rounded uh, ability here. That backhanded, yeah, just absolutely disgusting. Got it over. Sneaks it right the head in the stick of Josh Marcus. Had to keep his stick low to keep it, you know, he had to not only handle the ball, but keep it out of the reach of the defense, and he recognized that he had an opportunity to just flick that in with the backhand. Darian. Good fake there by Bonner. And Darian takes the lead now. They have the ball. There's a good time to throw a fake. There's a not so good time to throw a fake. That right there was the perfect time to just get those Staples players to turn their heads and collapse in, give him a chance to output that pass out. So good job by the captain, Bonner. We see Lancaster here. Seems to like his matchup. So we're going to see an invert, or maybe not an invert, might be a wing set, but an iso dodge here from the wing. Yeah. Trying to get top side, which he does. Yeah, they keep his the hands away from on his him. body. And but Corny, now Corny trying looking to fight for his maybe way his first of the day. On a short stick as well. And so he's got backs the up against up. Jake McGeehan. Watch for the quick slide here from Staples. So he's already halfway decided. Yep, this is. There he goes, Corny. Good defense, good team defense he by it, Staples. Flings it out in front. Ball's up in the air. Darian, got to be Cover, careful. That's Wes Scallon. Here. Here's Caesar. Caesar flings one. Off the pipe, it looks like. Probably not the time to drop your hands there. I love the uh, awareness of Caesar there to recognize, yes, sure, we want to maintain possession, but there's nobody on me. There's nobody within 10 strides of me. So he pushes, forces Staple to collapse on him. I would have just kept that stick up high and try to put that thing low and just an awkward release point. And a oh. shot from Barnett. That one doesn't go up. Good stop there. Now a scrum for the ball. And Marcus involved. gets there, flings it out. On the ground ball, look at that, he's out. Ryan Skolnick, number 40, is there, hits Lancaster. Ground balls, ground balls, right? Now make sure you're coming up Sticks it and some other sticks, and McNamara scoops it. And this is awesome, I'll tell you what, both sides right now are totally dialed into this. Both sidelines going nuts in simultaneous plays. Ground balls, fundamentals, I mean, it's simple, but Sometimes when the games, in, when you have an intense game like this, little things that are, are basics can sort of, you know, sort of fall on the back burner there. Like that's just a simple, you know, make sure you get your hands low, look through the ground ball, run through the ground ball, don't take your eye off it too quickly. Um, but I loved seeing it's McManus, right? Or Marcus, excuse me, Josh Marcus, making the great stop and then getting involved in the ground ball behind the net, finds the outlet pass. If that had connected, that would have been an awesome, op an outstanding opportunity for Staples. McGuckin pass low to Picorni. Costly turnover there with two minutes left in the third. So to any of the, the young players watching here, in games like this when your sticks have bagged out, whenever you have a chance, if you're on the sideline, grab a ball, you know, try to figure out exactly where the stick's whipping at, right? So if you have way too much of a pocket or way too much of a bag in your stick, your ball's going to throw down on you. So you want to adjust it on the fly. Obviously, you don't want to be doing it on the field. So your time on the sideline can be used to uh, to dial in your setup. Hear that echo call from Staples again. There's Burmeister about the 30. Flings it backwards over to Hawkey. And we're having an outstanding, I, was, I mentioned with Marcus and Josh Marcus, you know, that, that previous ser uh, series. But the goalie play on both sides today has been tremendous. This has been really fun to watch. I know now Udell. Udell gets to the right side of McNamara. Udell and wants it himself, and he can't have it. And there's McNamara. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a slash there, oh, too. So. Slash McNamara hard. Careful not to retaliate if you're Staples. I mean, obviously, yeah. Not ideal, you don't want to be getting stripped like that in the middle of the field, but you know, the worst thing, the last thing you'd want to do is get a penalty, so I think they got a little lucky. Udell there tried to throw a wrap check and wound up catching McNamara on the hip. He's a big guy though, he's tough. Hockey player too, some toughest people out there. Here's Picorni. Darian looks like they're trying to set something up ball here. Bilodeau in the middle looking to set a seal for Picorni. Good spin move inside. Now gets pushed out by number 40 Skolnick. 
Nice change of direction. Let's see if he's going to try to get him There's McCorney. McCorney shoots, and he scores. And he's just... Brady Picorni is so good at feeling where that, wow, mosh pit from Darian looking stellar right now. Um, he's so good at finding that point. If we see on the replay here, he knows he's coming to GLE, sees the hands coming down. He's going to go overhand, almost like a twister motion with that left hand to sneak it right over the stick of Marcus. That's just a, you know, there are a few attackmen in the country, I think, who who have the physical skill set that Picorni has, uh, has developed over his career. So an excellent opportunity for Darianne and to go back up by two. And Bacorny playing this game of lacrosse since a young age. Runs his family is a, a huge yeah, hit. I was about to say, that's you can't be doing that. Absolutely and another, massive hit. Mm, getting a little undisciplined here. Jay Anastasia, I believe, on Jack Mariska. Gotta be careful not to give Darian more opportunities if you're Staples. They've, and that's, that's the time on the third. Darian hyped up. Played a great up game two. so far. If you if you're starting to throw, you know, elbows or anything like that, you know, you're at the end of three, it's Darian five, three. Wow. We'll see what Coach K you know, he'll settle his guys down and we'll get ourselves a nice fourth quarter. But you know, emotions starting to play a role here. Picorni, obviously Staples had shut him out up until that last goal. Darian sideline erupting. Um but yeah, no, this is this is FC Act Lacrosse in twenty twenty four. Everyone can beat anyone on any given day you know both of these teams are well coached tons of athletes whether that's on the defensive side offensive side the goalies right so uh i think an emphasis on the fourth quarter here you call it fourth quarter you call it war quarter right so this is when everyone needs to be playing their best lacrosse no undisciplined mistakes whether on darian side that's turning the ball over in transition uh or you know for staples just in that last segment there not that i think they've played a dirty game by any means i'm saying just little things like that you don't want to be giving the ball back to darian when you're so good at taking those long possessions and sort of really taking the air out of the ball but uh yeah we got a good one here at stadium field five three blue wave another good looking song to, looking to keep staples locked down for these next 12 minutes and if they could take down the number nine ranked team in the country, that would be absolutely massive. And this is just one of plenty of hard teams the Blue Aver schedule to face this season. They face a ton of out-of-state teams like Yorktown, St. Anthony's, Chaminade, and Chatham as well. It's Mariska against Salado. Face off Salado. Wins it, keeps Good himself in there. So See, Gettysburg Slato's, commit. Slato's gonna, he's done that now twice on his last two clean faceoff wins. He's really pushing hard towards the net. So I have a feeling he's got the green light to go from Coach Kashansky. You see him beating, uh, beating Darian to the midfield line there. But Staples a little bit slow on the substitution. They could have had an opportunity, but obviously that all depends on what's going on, you know with the rest of the 6v6 offense going on. So if it's not the time to go. Bonner there making sure to cut off adjacent passes. There's number Stand 21, Will Fleming. Burmeister. Bonner's there. Rins coming down. Pretty pretty straight Great now. Great defense. It's not as windy as it was a couple minutes ago, but it's definitely picked up it's a little heavier good good win good uh uh possession win there for for darianne lancaster here is going to take it himself udell applies pressure we got a open charlie tom yeah, on the over far to side tom here and charlie tom Tom's is gonna not afraid in. to go to the net here goes tom back over to barnett barnett pump fix and he scores oh and charlie tom seems to be shaking up tom down Wow, wow, the big defenseman takes it the distance. Transition play. Finds Barnett, the Richmond commit. It might have been his heel there. Yeah, I'm worried that his foot caught into the turf after the contact from Staples. But what a great, you know, he could have obviously taken that himself and, and buried that. But finding Barnett on the doorstep, allowing him to <laughs> throw that one quick, you know, box fake, hitch fake, sends Marcus flying out of the net and is able to finish right in front. But... Obviously, our hearts are with Charlie Tom right now. Never want to see any of your teammates 
Yeah, he's still down behind the net now. Second year varsity player. His brother James plays football at Tufts and was a member of this team last year. It's Darian taking a knee for their fallen teammate. Yeah, well, another look there. And Charlie Tommy will get back on his feet. We'll see if we'll see what the severity of the injury was. I think it is from him planting that foot. Yeah, so it's a problem with the rain, right? So everything's a little bit softer. Cleet really digs in, and he's a big guy, so he's got a lot of weight to carry. Man, you just you hate to see that. Your heart breaks for Charlie Tom right now. Hopefully, it's something where they can tape him up and you know get him back out this game. If you know. I mean, that's the ideal situation. Obviously, the team, they're all going to rally around him right now. But we'll see, and uh, we'll find out more about the status of number 43 in just a few moments. That's a tough loss for Darian if he isn't able to come back into this one. There's Anastasi beating out Mariska. 16, there's Max Hill. Number 17, Connor Lane will come in. Football wide receiver as well for Charlie Tom. Halky, near side. Past Olvaney. Olvaney gives him a shove. Now behind the net. Charlie Tom getting worked on by the training staff here on the bench. Yeah, it looks like it's that right heel ankle area Burmeister I know Staples here you can see them just being very deliberate with uh, with their possession as they have been for most of the game here a couple opportunity a couple possessions where they might have turned the ball over quicker than they would have liked to have definitely looking to sort of eat away at some clock as they work to get this game back to a one goal obviously to tie it up and then but to get it back to at least one goal with having a couple minutes to work. Hawking now a shot, Schaefer. It's high, Schaefer already has two, was looking for number three. Decent look there, just couldn't put it on net. Trying to do maybe a little too much with it. Yeah, way, way high, had the top part open. Yeah, too so much though. Anytime you're dropping your hands, especially when it's raining like this, that ball's just gonna sail on you. You're gonna hook it over the net. You have a higher probability if you're shooting overhand, right? That thing's going to go into the ground and then bounce into the net rather than just flying, you know, two feet over the crossbar. As There's Udell. Udell with a nice little hesitator move there. There he goes. There's Clark. Not hesitator, but rocker step. Clark working on the short stick. McGuckin. It's Burmeister now at the top. Bonner's there. Burmeister gets a quick shove from McGuckin. McGuckin playing both sides of the field this game. And they haven't taken the cleat off of Charlie Tom's ankle, so they're really sort of looking at it and being careful. I don't know if we're gonna see him return to the game at this point. I'm not a trainer though, so I don't know exactly what they're they're working on down there. There's a cross, now it's Schaefer. Schaefer a shot, it's stuffed out in front. Good idea trying to get that twister shot over the stick of Carter Hagen, but Hagen saw it all the way. Tough angle to be doing that at. I know he's trying to make the most of it, but with how this Staples offense has succeeded with uh, you know time of possession and whatnot, I would, I would think that the better shot would be to wait and let your offense sort of reset, especially now that Tom is not out there. Try to find a, a matchup opportunity elsewhere. Billado cor yep. corrals it here. See Lancaster check in for Darianne. Lancaster back on, he's on the near side. See Bilodeau kind of taking his time with it. Circling around Nate Morillo in front of him, holding that stick out. We'll see if Bilodeau likes to pass. Yeah, flings it over to Rubenstein. Now Rubenstein maybe will turn on the burners here. Or just kind of jog in. Past the 30 now. An invert set here. So we see Rubenstein has the short stick matchup. He's bringing that short stick to Brady Picorni. Staples shutting off Brady there at, Brady there at X. But now we'll see if Brady sets a pick here. Well, actually, if you're dodging on the short stick, you wouldn't want to set that pick. But we're going to see how Darian tries to get Picorni the short stick matchup at X. 
But I have a lot of trust in Rupenstein with the ball in his stick. So let's see. Yep, there's the switch. Didn't yeah, quite get corny. the switch we were looking for. Now in front, for. a shot from Bilodeau to the right side. And just awkward positioning there for Rupenstein on that, that ch uh, chase there. This ball kind of went by him. He had to do a little bit of a spin. It sort of fell into the lap of Staples there, the Staples short stick. But good job by Staples defense getting through that big short opportunity, keeping the long stick on Brady as we see a little bit of... Under seven minutes left and... Number 40, Ryan Skolnick had trouble getting that and one. And they're offsides. Staples does. is offsides again. Another offsides wow. call for Staples. That is their third of the game as Lancaster push in transition. Shansky can't Cops believe not to it. take the shot. He backs out. But, yeah, that's that's three times in a row now. So, if you're Coach Kashansky, my goodness, you got to speak with your, your – especially your defense because it looks like this is happening on the clear. You just got to make sure you have that guy back. Just uh, crouched hands on his face. <laughs> Coach Kashansky – can't believe it, probably more than yeah. me and you can, Jack. Here's Lancaster. He's a great McCorny. coach, so I can imagine he's, if, if that'll be a point of emphasis, if if not mid-game here, but definitely this week as they prepare for their next matchup. Still a whole lot of time left in this one. We have 6.04, Darian with the three-goal lead as Picorni pushes hard here. Yeah, Picorni goes, kind of no-look snake eyes shot. It's just, it's hard to time that if you're a goalie. and. I know. I like to say, you know, there there are certain guys who, who have just w worked and crafted their games where they can, they have that shot in the bag, right? Like that's not the type of release that I would personally take, but he has that shot in the bag. So, yeah, that snake eyes is just. If you're Marcus, you have no idea when that shot's coming, and if he's able to put that on net, then that's going to be a hard one to stop. Just wide now. It's McGuckin at X circles. If you're Darianne, if you're really trying to get this big short to work, you really need to dodge off of that shoulder of your your uh, of Picorni. If Picorni's setting that pick, but you wouldn't set a pick with a with a long stick. So, or, sorry, with with a long stick to a short stick, it would be the other way around. Mm. Right around midfield, Connor Lane just a little too much on, on the it. ground and tried to hockey that forward to to keep it on the Darian side so that one of their midfielders could pick it up, but just had a little bit too much. Tough working with a guy on your back like that. So good job by the Staples attack unit there to pressure him enough to uh, make him sort of fling that one out of bounds. As we're going to get a look at Staples' offense yeah, here I with know. five minutes to go. Hendrickson in front of him. Hendrickson will probably get some more time now that Charlie Tom is still on the sideline. And yeah, and Charlie Tom does appear to have... Uh, some sort of a dressing or an ice pack on his ankle. This is not, he was not likely to return in this game. So thoughts and prayers go out to Charlie Tom. Number 21, Will Fleming. Fleming looks to get inside and down low. Carter Hagen had a good read on that one, but that's a low, that's a high percentage shot, right? Because Hagen's expecting that to go from low to high instead opting to keep that on the ground, trying to pull it to the near side pipe. That's just a hard one to track, but it was from far enough out where Hagen had a good read on it. And now another one, maybe a pass. It looked like the ball got away. No record was near that one. Just over four minutes left, and Sables has to score three goals here. I don't believe Darian's called a timeout this half, have they? I don't believe so. So clock management's going to start to come into effect here. Coach Braemeyer, obviously. Oh. In my book, blow. the greatest head lacrosse coach in high school across history. He's he's has a, had a tremendous career, but one of the biggest um, oh, strengths in his coaching game. style is how well of a game manager he is. He knows he's been there before. He knows certain opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Coach Kashansky, obviously great coach in his own right. So this is going to come down to there's going to be a little bit of coaching battle going on here yeah. as we near the end of the fourth quarter. Well, Jack, we saw as there's a shot that's wide for number 21 Fleming. We saw that in that one timeout. You're talking about being a game manager from Coach Braymeyer about how his team was right on the side and he was able to get the timeout and secure the possession as Lancaster flung it Absolutely. up into the air. Great point, great point. Yep, that was just, you know, recognized it, had the ref right there, probably ran down to the ref as he's watching so that he uh, made sure he was heard. It's pretty easy to hear Coach Braemeyer, though. Um, he, uh, he's got that coaching voice. In his 41st season, I believe. There's one across now, open shot, and what a missed opportunity for the Wreckers, my goodness. Just a 
bit of a defensive breakdown there. I thought that pass was going to get knocked down from the angle I was at, so it must have just slipped through, but that's a wide open opportunity. And Schaefer missed. around off Hagen. Hagen falls down, running for it. And they're going to keep it with Staples here. Good effort from Hagen. Staples needs to start pushing here. They need to go and try to put a few on the board, down by three. Ball's on the turf. Darian there it goes. Great scoop by Darian. What defense. I believe that's Olvaney with it now. Turn Olvaney on the burners. With the wheels trying to get this thing upfield. As McNamara now. Steven Olvaney, a returning little. varsity player. See the midi back there for Darian as here comes Lancaster, yeah, Lancaster down Main Street. Thinks better of it. Yeah, rolls, rolls it to McGuckin. Yep. Good play there. Sticks are all pretty wet. He knows there's nobody in McGuckin's vicinity. Ops to roll it over to him. Gucken now Rupenstein near side. Bilodeau is going to come on. We've seen a lot of a lot of action from the captains with Rupenstein, McGucken. Curious to see, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm always curious when watching games like this and weather like this. The fatigue starts to set in at a certain point. And so these are the crucial m minutes, last few minutes of the game. Curious, you know, seeing some guys on the sideline with their sort of their hands on their knees. So time to recover because your opportunity, right, it, it, it could go that quickly. It, it could be a instant back-to-back -back off a face-off. You never know. There's McBride picks it up. Lost it for a sec, but then regains. Good job, McBride. One Pick hand on the stick. One thing, I touched on it at the very beginning of the, of the broadcast here, but Darian has a lot of speed on the offensive side of the ball. McBride is no exception to that. He's quick and shifty as they're going to have him sort of run some clock here. Yeah, here he goes. Gets McBride opens, step. look, yeah. and he scores. Buries it. The nail in the coffin. Just with that speed, able to sort of get a step, recognizes that he's got one-on-one. -on -one. Look, the goalie's out of the net here, so they're trying to press out and double the ball. McBride recognizing that, able to get top side and bury that overhand into the center of the net. What a great job from the sophomore, Max McBride. I don't know why Porter Barnett's picture came up on that goal animation. We apologize for that. but You see a bunch of Staples fans on the far sideline there are leaving the game prematurely here. So a minute 30 left, hard to score four goals. Scooped up by Mark McNamara. McNamara. Far side. Good stick protection there. Always nerve-wracking when you're seeing a pole and a good timeout. When you're seeing a pole run up the sideline one-handed like that, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of surface area for an attackman to check, you know, get try to strip the ball from. So good timeout call by Coach Bremar. With 119, Darian's going to set up a sort of a clock management scheme here. I'm curious to see what the personnel will look like. Might want to put some of your faster players, maybe your short stick D midfielders, because goals are no longer the most important thing. You're going to put your, your fastest guys out there. Maybe even keep a long stick midi out. Um, he's, he's done that every now and then. Um, but in this situation, you might just want to have, you know, all six short sticks, but ready to pounce if and when Staples does get the ball back. Darian. Be ready to strike. Yeah, Darian leading 7-3 up by 4, minute 19 left. And they've really, they've really shut down a powerhouse Staples Wreckers offense. And with the likes of, you know, we see Udell and, and uh, excuse me, Burmeister both committed. Udell going to Michigan, Burmeister going to Notre Dame, and then others like Tristan Schaefer was two goals. Was, he's going to Colgate and Darian, ton of Darian Huddle here, Bob, bobbing their heads a little bit, jump around. Got jump around going, just over a minute left to play. So let's see what personnel they opt to trot out there. See Barnett, Picorni, McGuckin has the ball. He's being covered by a long pole there. So I'm, I'm curious. You're going to see Marcus staying in the net here, but as soon as the ball goes to X here, you see Marcus is already out of the net. Mm -hmm. So they're throwing that, they're running that double. As McGuckin gets a step now, McGuckin has the defender falls down. Thinks better of it. Yep, just keep running to space, run to space. Kill time, just over a minute now. Good job by one. Staples recovering. We're under that a up. minute and some hard hits. That's just good defense there. Physical defense from Staples. Good job by McGuckin. I thought he might have had a chance to, you know, take one in, but 
You're up by four here. It's it's really not necessary. Good decision for him to just keep running to the alley. As another shot. That Burmeister just shot low bounces. Couldn't tell if he got target. a piece of that or not. Forty-five seconds to go. And I'm sure this won't be the last we'll see of these two teams this year in terms of... Dell fires one, he scores. Great shot. So that's earlier in the game, I remember mentioning he had dropped his hands and tried to bring one high. That time he opts to shoot that into the hip, as I was saying before. Great finish, that low finish. It, it's just a higher percentage shot, so we'll see on the replay here. Uh, let's see, turn and rake. Sorry, Carter. But uh, that was definitely a, a, a situation where instead of dropping his hands and trying to sneak one under the crossbar, he's instead shooting into the hip of the defender and burying that into the low corner. Yeah, we couldn't quite get a replay on that one, but yeah, I'm gonna whip it in for Adam Udell. Maybe too little too late. Oh, wind. That wind now really picking up. Staples are going, it's Udell with it again. Udell another shot. Just about 20 seconds left in this fourth quarter. I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with both of these squads. I think there were a couple opportunities. So the things that are gonna be big takeaways for the next matchup are gonna be that, those three turnovers by, um, by, Staples on the offsides call, and then for Darian, as the game went, you know, as the game got on, went on, later on in the third and fourth quarters, we saw them taking better possessions. Yep, and that'll do it. Time runs out, Darian runs on the field and they have taken down the undefeated Staples records. What a game. It's just, yeah, overall just such a great game. Two really well-balanced squads. Really heartbreaking for Charlie Tom though. Uh, we, we hope he's gonna have a speedy recovery here. Uh, we don't know the full situation or what the injury is, but he never went inside to the training table, so he was able to stay outside. He's just putting ice on, the, on that right ankle. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna see more of these two teams. There'll be plenty to work on for both squads, but overall, big, big, big win for the Blue Wave here. And Briggs McGuckin, captain, had a hat trick. Four other goals, McBride, Barnett, Rupenstein, Bacorny, and 7-4. Your final, Tristan Schaefer with two goals for Staples. And like you said, Jack, these teams will most likely meet in the FCAC and state playoffs. Two uh, top teams, maybe arguably the two top teams to the goalies in this shaking, FCAC conference. Goalies shaking hands here. Both both goalies today were phenomenal. So that that's going to be uh, fun to watch as the FCAC as the season goes on, everyone's got, you know, obviously Buchanan, Wilton, like FCAC this year is pretty stacked. So it'll be it'll be fun to see how these teams uh, advance moving on. But Owen, thank you for having me on. This was an absolute blast. Um, Absolutely. Thank you to the Darren Athletic Foundation and DAF Media. Mm -hmm. uh, what you guys do week in, week out is absolutely awesome. For somebody who's an alum, um, it's, it's really cool to see. And uh, we appreciate you guys for it. Of course. Thank you, Jack. It was Awesome for you to come on, call us one with me. So Staples moves to three and one, Darian three and two. And Darian's next game, they uh, travel to Yorktown in New York on, uh, in, in three days on the 16th. And just one last time, one last thank you, whole DAF media crew, Trevor Kisco, Thomas Airbar on cameras, Caitlin Kelly doing the graphics, Jason Bellingham on instant replay, and his twin brother, Eric Bellingham, directing this whole thing. Our head advisor, Damon Andrew, couldn't be here today. He was down in New Jersey doing the girls lacrosse game that for Darian they sadly dropped that one 5-4 and then uh, one last time from DAF Media joint venture the Darian Foundation and Darian Athletic Foundation joined alongside Jack Book I'm Owen Heffron and have a great rest of your night are you enjoying this broadcast if you like what you see on the DAF Media Network, please help support us with a donation. DAF Media is committed to education and broadcast excellence. Your support allows us to keep bringing you high-quality community programming while giving our student volunteer broadcasters hands-on STEM experiential learning of all parts of computer networking and video production. Your donations help pay for equipment, insurance, transportation, and our award-winning advisor, and make these broadcasts possible. To donate, 
you can scan the Venmo QR code shown here or visit our website at dafmedia.org backslash donate. The link to donate is also in the description of this YouTube video. For those of you who prefer a more traditional approach, checks can be made payable to DAF Media and mailed to the address shown here. Any donation of $1,000 or more will be recognized as sponsors of our broadcasts for one year. Feel free to pause the broadcast to write this down. Thanks for watching and supporting DAF Media.